Good morning, everybody. We're just casually walking down the street in Japan, or are we? Because right in front of us, it's Ijunaka. By the way, that's Mount Fuji. The one day that I prayed for to have a beautiful day on this two week trip, we got it. We actually got it. This is gonna be a top tier day of my life. All right, old school style start to a vlog like I did at the very first review, Alarond. If you had told me then that one day I would do it this way with that ride behind me, Ijanaika here at Fuji Q Highland in Japan, I would have said, you're crazy, that's never gonna happen. If it did happen, it'd be maybe 10, 15 years down the road. No, here we are, 2024. That's Ijanaika. Maybe my most, probably the number one bucket list coaster that I have yet to ride in the world. We're actually here, babe. Can you believe it? No, I can't believe it. <laughs> anyway, some stats about this beast that's behind me. It opened in 2006, and if it looks like X2, that's because it's a very, very similar ride to X2, except X2 is an arrow. This was an SNS. Basically, when um, Arrow went defunct because of X2, SNS took over. Alan Schulke was still there. He created each and I could stand almost 50 feet taller than X2, 249 feet high, hit speeds of 78 miles per hour. It turns on its own. I mean, they, they are preset flips. It's not like the 40 free spins, but it's just out of control madness, insanity. You are looking straight down that drop before you flip back up as you're going down the drop. It has absolutely insane, I say insane all the time, I apologize. Wild elements, positive forces. It throws you around, it feels like a car crash. It's fantastic. That was X2. Everybody else says each Nike is better than X2. I had X2 at number five on my rankings. So I can't imagine what this is gonna be. Velocicoaster. Shaking in your boots, maybe a new number one on the docket here. We'll see, look at Let's hop on. Megan, are you ready? I'm very ready, let's I'm go. I'm ready. And we're gonna get multiple rides because we have some skip the lines, which is awesome. Eat your Nike, eat your Nike, eat your Nike. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm in danger. You've never even been on X2. No. This is happening, guys. <laughs> Janaika. Twice. Twice. We flip flopped outside, inside. <laughs> I really like it. Do you have words? The outside hurt a little bit, but I really liked it otherwise. So let's just start off with you know, a lot of people saying why a Janaika is so much better than X2 is that it's a lot smoother. I don't know how long ago those reports were. It is smoother than X2. I will say that. It's not, I would say, smooth though. Have, oh, fun fact, I haven't been on X2 yet. In case she hasn't been on X2. That. Yeah, no. Um, so the fact that X2 is rougher is a little fruit. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, you saw my reaction on X2. Watch that review. Think that for me times like five. Because the spinning is that just more in a good way. The intensity into your body and then the views of Mount Fuji and just you are surrounded by mountains. Yeah. It's wild. Honestly, seeing Mount Fuji from the break runs pretty nice. Insane. Insane. <laughs> uh, I'm going to wait to give a score until later in the day. We do have one more skip the line yeah. later on. 
I still don't know where it's placing yet or what I'm going to score, but wow. I've, I have the Ijenike credit. We have, have the Ijenike, 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 Ijenike credit before X2. That is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> more thoughts to come later on as it cooks yes. a little bit more. Let's go ride the other coasters here at Fuji Q. Well, this is a stinger. Oh, does this hurt? If you don't know, this is the loop from Do to Dampa, which was the world's fastest accelerating coaster. I think like zero to 110 in like one and a half seconds. This was, this is gonna be the most painful defunct credit of my life. Cause I, I'm a launch fan, one of the biggest launch fans in the world. In fact, I never get to experience this thing. Oh, that hurts, especially walking by it right now. Look at that broken track on Do to Dampa. God, that is so painful. The fact that this coaster was here with everything else, like Fujiyama, like each and I, Takabisha that we're in line for right now. What a top tier roller coaster park, good lord. I'm at Fujiku, what? This is a really, really cool thing for Fujiku Island to do. They actually have kind of a graveyard here of all their defunct coasters, but also leaving their trains. That is so, so cool. And uh, boy, we're coming up to uh, the most painful one of these. That's Dota Dampa, guys. Oh, God. Oh, man. 2024. Ouch. Ouch. Yes. The next coaster on the list is Fuji Q Highlands brand new 2023 Intamin multi launch called Zocon. This is a kind of it looks like it's a straddle coaster it's not it is a motorbike style seating it's not a straddle coaster but you do get to lean over and grab onto the handlebars um this looks really really good almost 4,000 feet of track really really long speeds of 45 miles per hour it goes forwards it goes backwards the comparison is probably honestly Hagrid's with a little less theming understandably Hagrid's is one of the best themed roller coasters in the world you stay low to the ground for most of the ride, you get that backward spike right there. There's lights on the train. It goes through some tunnels, multiple launches, which is always a big win for me. I'm really excited for this. I think this might be one of the sleeper hits of this entire trip. You know, obviously when it's surrounded by rides like Ijenaika, Fujiyama, Takabisha, you need a family coaster, you know, for those that don't like the extreme and Fuji-Q does extreme maybe more than anybody else, especially here in Japan. So let's hop on some Zocon. I'm actually very excited. I think this is gonna be a really good experience. Zocon, I had said this might be a sleeper hit of the trip, and I was absolutely correct in thinking that Zocon was so, so much fun. What I didn't know going in is there's an onboard audio soundtrack, and it's such a catchy tune. It sounds like the beginning of like, you know, those epic anime openings, just these really, really catchy songs, it's all hype the whole time during that ride. The tunnels all like light up, it's a party. This ride is an absolute party. You're dancing in your seat. And the coaster itself is actually really, really fun too. The launches are fun. There is some unfortunate trims in the middle. That's okay. You get some cool little airtime pops. You just surround yourself with this beautiful setting. Obviously you get the, the mountain setting as well. Zocon's a big win for me. This is a really, really good time. Perfect, perfect for families. Perfect for everybody. I'm a diehard enthusiast. This is great an absolutely perfect fit for this park. They have three of the most intense roller coasters in the world. They needed something like this. What an absolutely perfect addition for Fuji Q. And it is a long ride. You feel that 4,000 feet of track for sure. And it's some good speed too, 45 miles per hour. 
Just a solid, solid family coaster. This one is a big hit for me. I'm going as high as 7.91 for SoCon. Really, really enjoyed that thing. Hopefully we get on again later on. Um, there's the backward spike right there. You hear, you hear the audio soundtrack a little bit right there. SoCon, baby. Another win here at FujiQ, what I think is going to be the best roller coaster park in Japan. I don't know. We still got Nagashima to go. We'll see. I feel like how rare is it to get like the you know natural landmark of your country, which of course Mount Fuji is for Japan, right next to an amusement park. Almost never, right? This is just an absolute dream for me. It's like you know a, a national park right in front of you as you're riding some of the most insane roller coasters the world has ever known. Unbelievable. I'm about to try this uh, shooting dark ride. I think it's oh, very new because yeah. it is trackless. It's over for y'all. It's over. It's over. You're all gonna lose. Have a fun ride, everybody. Woo! Look at these golden cats for their rapids ride. This looks really, really well themed. Definitely taking a dip later, and uh, yeah, you can uh, <laughs> send these cannons of water out, which you know I love. Uh, that's so cool. We just did that haunted hospital mental asylum walkthrough. <laughs> I do kind of like haunts. I usually try to go to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal every year, but man, there's not like a lot of scares in there, but the set designs, like they built a legit hospital. You walk through all these quarters, there's all these like wheelchairs, stretchers, blood everywhere, multiple floors. I think there's like three floors in that thing. It was a 33 minute experience when when the scares hit they get you with that anticipation and they get you like you're focusing on one thing but the scare comes from somewhere else really really clever really really well done they don't touch you which is my big thing as long as they don't touch you i'll do any haunted house but whew, heart's beating since 1996 king of coasters fujiyama there's the stats in kilometers i know that means 81 miles per hour world's highest height wind up height what the heck's wind up height drop in maximum speed at least it was when it opened in 1996 not so much here in 2024 next up on the list a very very tall roller coaster called fuji yama a togo remember togo from big apple coaster i haven't done a togo on this trip yet no because i didn't do bandit at yomuri land first togo of the trip and when it opened in 1996, it was the world's tallest roller coaster. It stands at 259 feet tall, hitting speeds of 81 miles per hour. Very, very similar stats to Thunder Dolphin, but this one came first. And honestly, it's more iconic because it's you get to see Mount Fuji. I remember I prayed for that beautiful day here at Fuji Q. Oh, we got it. So I can't wait to see the views of the mountain from Fujiyama. It's a massive, massive roller coaster. One of the tallest and longest in the world. Uh, it's one of those rides where I've heard the name, I've heard a lot about it. I don't I haven't really heard many reviews. So maybe it's underwhelming, maybe it's really good. I don't know, but guess what? I'm here and we get to ride it today. Fujiyama, beautiful skies. I think it's gonna be a good time. See how it is. Fujiyama, the most intense roller coaster in the world. Again, in 1996 when it opened, maybe, but uh, it, this did hold the title for world's tallest coaster uh, until Millennium Force opened at Cedar Point in 2000. So, four years running, this was the world's tallest roller coaster. Pretty cool. Fujiyama, hello! <laughs> They're over 200 feet in the air, that's so awesome.
Fujiyama. Fujiyama, Fujiyama, that's what you say as you're leaving the station. Like I said, I wasn't sure of what people really thought about Fujiyama. Didn't hear many reviews from it. Uh, it started off beautiful. Very, very long and slow lift. Obviously, you see Mount Fuji once again on the way up. Uh, it started off, honestly, pretty tame. The drop, nothing to it. Uh, an awesome turnaround, which I hope we're going to do later. There's actually a, a tower uh, that goes all the way up to that turnaround. You can wave to people as you're, like, you know, over 200 feet in the air, which is really, really cool. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to return the favor uh, standing up at that tower. Uh, but then, yeah, just some turnaround, some drops, some decent air time. It was pretty mild. And then you hit the second half. Somebody said, I think it was Tyler or Dan, I forgot, that that ride is magnum on, like, ass. <laughs> it's, uh, these turnarounds are so janky, so jarring, and the ride just keeps going and going and going. You finally, you do like a third lap and then there's these like back and forth. It's like the Dorito Hills on Magnum, but instead of hills, it's just these like side to side motions that are absolutely insane. I, my first ride, I did ride it twice. My first ride, I was like, I don't know if I really love that or if I really hated it. The back definitely hurt. Then I rode again and I had kind of a similar feeling like I did at Magnum. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's janky but in really really fun ways especially if you expect it and you you just brace yourself waiting for those really really jarring moments uh it's a lot of fun super long this is the third longest roller coaster in the world currently only beast and steel dragon which we're gonna ride in a couple days uh are longer than that thing um, i really like fujiyama it's a classic very historic roller coaster just because it was a former tallest roller coaster in the world one of the longest roller coasters in the world i'm going pretty high I'm going 8.66. Uh, it's, it's really that good. And honestly, I think I like it better than Magnum because, yeah, Magnum, you get the view of Lake Erie. You don't get the Mount Fuji surrounding mountain views. You just don't. Uh, Fujiyama, another win. Another win here at Fuji Q. This above me is Fujiyama Tower. This is actually outside of the park. It is an upcharge attraction that you can do, but this is where you get all the way to the turnaround of Fujiyama and also this like metal thing around me is a slide that we're gonna go down. Uh, there's also like a ropes course up there. We don't think we're gonna have time for that. It'll look really cool. Highly suggested if you do have the time. And it's not too, too expensive. Uh, 1,200 yen to get up there and 12,000 for the slide. Uh, you're looking at about 15 bucks to do both. Not too bad. We have reached the Fujiyama sky deck. Oh my God. This view would be good enough, but when you pan the camera, <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm speechless. I'm good. <laughs> Hi. Absolutely insane, that's not freaking. And yes, that, that isn't a cloud behind it, that's actually smoke billowing from the top of Mount Fuji. That is, because it is an active volcano, if you didn't know. They also have that slide that you can go down, that's Matt's about to, about to head down. I don't know why I need a helmet and freaking knee pads, but Matt seemed to enjoy it though. That was really cool, obviously, all the way up there. The views, some of the best in the world at an amusement park. Mount Fuji right there. And then coming down the slide, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. They have like these like multicolored sections. You can see this last final section is all see-through, which is really cool. Highly, highly recommend the Fujiyama Tower and it's not that expensive either. It's kind of random here at Fuji Q. They got this like little France section. I don't hate it. It looks nice. And you know, we've been to France. Anything that reminds me of France, I'll take. Very, very pretty though. And we got, we got bunnies and, or dog, I don't know what these are. I think they're bunnies. 
Another coaster to do here at Fuji Q Highland, and it is the one right behind me. It's called Taka Bisha. By the way, that's that's just Mount Fuji again, just chilling in the background. No big deal. This ride may look familiar to you. Sorry for the sun. See that lift hill, that hill right there, very, very scary, very, very steep because for a very long time, this was the world's steepest roller coaster when it opened in 2011. It has a 141 foot, 121 degree drop. That's right, it goes like backwards. It goes backwards into the lift hill. Uh, hit speeds of 62 miles per hour, seven inversions. And why did I say it may look familiar? Because it is the same exact ride as TMNT Shell Razor at the American Dream Mall in New Jersey. The only difference, all the stats are the same. Even the length is down to the inch. The only thing that's different is the one in New Jersey is a half a degree steeper because they just wanted to take the record from Takabisha. I don't care, the scenery here is way better than being in, the, in an enclosed building. Here you get a view of Mount Fuji. There you get a view of New, New York through a window. Come on, this is a thousand times better. Obviously a Gerstlauer Eurofighter, just like Team NT Shell Razor. From all accounts, this thing is so much better than Shell Razor. I actually kind of don't really care for Shell Razor. I, don't, I think I gave it in the sixes and even that may have been a bit high. I think this one's gonna be a lot better. You got the views. You've gotten some pretty positive reviews from other enthusiasts over the years. Uh, let's hop on some Takabisha. I'm excited. Guinness World Records, steepest roller coaster, Takabisha, 121 degrees, and then the American Dream Mall said, no, we need another half a degree to just destroy this record. I still think this is gonna be better. Takabisha, everybody. I'm still pretty much calling it the world's steepest roller coaster. Come on, a half a degree. Does that matter? It doesn't to me. It's tied as far as I'm concerned. Is it better than Shell Razor? Oh, you you knew. You knew it was gonna be better than Shell Razor. Obviously, you got the views of Mount Fuji and the surrounding mountains. It's outdoors. There's no puddles. There's none of those Shell Razor potholes that you have at the Dream Mall. Uh, I will say Gerstlauer Eurofighter is still not my favorite. I would still prefer like Karnan and Novgorod at Hansa Park over this one. Uh, but putting Shell Razor outdoors is, that's, that is how it was always intended. It should not never have been placed inside a building, in my opinion. Uh, I didn't mention the launch. If you remember in Shell Razor, it actually starts with kind of a JoJo roll and then into that zero to 62 mile per hour launch. It's a really punchy launch. Um, no head banging on this thing. You know, I don't love a lot of inversions, as you know, there's seven inversions, but they're well paced. They break it up with the lift hill because the lift hill is halfway through the ride. And then you do that 121 degree drop, which is, yeah, it's pretty scary. But once you've done a few beyond vertical drops, not too bad. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. I like how the first inversion in the launch is like kind of in a closed tunnel. That's really cool. Um, it's probably four of four for me of the coasters here but it's still good. I'm gonna go 7.63, which means all four coasters over a seven. That's kind of wild. I know I haven't given my Eugen Ico score. You know what's over a seven. That's not a, not a spoiler. Uh, I like Takabisha. What a, what a, maybe one of the world's best, you know, top four of any park out there. It's definitely in the, in the conversation for sure. So that's, uh, that's Takabisha. Let's get, hopefully, that one last ride on Ijanaika. We shall see. I will come back to you with my final score for that one very soon. Okay, finally. I got not just one, but two different night rides on Ijanaika. Five in the day toll. I did not think I was going to get five rides. Got a very, very front row on the outside seat. The most intense roller coaster experience that I've ever felt. Mostly in a good way, not all in a good way. I got hit in places that I did not want to get hit in. You could, you know, figure that out for yourselves. 
but man, you get thrown around on that outside seat, especially in the front. So freaking intense and scary at night because it's just pitch black when you look down. You don't know when you're gonna flip. <sighs> My final opinion though. I do still like it better than next two. I, I don't I kinda like getting thrown around a little bit. That outside if I just rode outside seats, this probably wouldn't be as highly ranked as I will rank it. Probably same for X2 though. I actually don't think it's not like massively better than X2, at least for me. Uh, it's not smooth. It's just not smooth. Inside smoother and the middle, like row three, which is the middle. Inside middle, that is the smoothest experience, but then front on the outside, holy crap. If you don't like roughness, you don't like getting thrown around, you won't like Ejanaika, plain and simple. For a score, is it my new number one? It has the scenery, has the height, has the intensity. New number one for me, babe? No. No. No, no it's, it's not, not number one. Actually, my night ride, especially the outside ride, it was, it was almost too intense. It was too, no, not yes. almost, it was too intense. Uh, it hurt a lot, everything hurts. The score is 9.56. So again, my top 25 at the end of the year, don't pay attention to that anymore. I'm gonna do a new top 25 at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be pretty similar. Going by that scale, that means Ijanaika is now my number four. I think okay. that's a fair placement, right? Yeah, I definitely would rank it lower. That part of that is because the last two rides, we got mainly my two out, not last two, sorry, mainly my two outside rides, the outside is a lot more violent. Yeah, um, a and lot. I, even though they like practically stapled me down, I still felt myself come out of the seat and especially my last night ride, the like mental toll that that took of like, it's dark and I'm falling towards the ground and I'm flying out of my seat, but I'm not really, was was too much and I love adrenaline. Though. Yeah. So. Very fair. Yeah, I mean, it's maybe the most intense roller coaster in the world. Like from, from start to beginning. Yeah, Probably. you know, I-305 has the turn that's intense, but like just an absolutely insane that's the the adjective of this park and definitely it's insane, the yeah. it's, it's insane but 9.56 it's still a top five roller coaster for me it's not number one though so it is what it is because it does does have some flaws it does have a little bit of flaws it's little, not perfect a little angry little yeah that one has a bite uh hakuge is next we'll see that that could potentially toy with number one we'll see we'll see we'll and, see Anyway, that ends a amazing day here at Fuji Q. Uh, I would say the, the consensus major complaint about this place is the operations. The operations, it's they're fine like speed wise. The safety theater they're is so incredibly nice. awful. Checks everywhere. There's yeah. like pre shows to make sure like you do these little dances to make sure so, that you know you know I don't even we don't know Japanese, but no. Um, <laughs> But so for Ejanaika, there are three separate belts and you have to do it like, and then like three people, no, sorry, two people come by, one person checks you twice. Yeah. And another person does a quick visual check. And on one of those three, you also have to double check your restraints. Yeah, they got to check it. And then they have to see you checking it. And I don't know. I'm all for safety, I think but this is over. After the Dota Dampa incident, I think they just went complete overkill uh -huh. like with every ride here. So that's the one unfortunate thing. Uh, although, thankfully it was a quiet day. Yeah. So, like, the line, the longest line I think that we saw was 50 minutes. Yeah, it wasn't um, so bad. Then we had some skip the lines, so that was good. Um, it was a great day, though. This is the top four roller coasters. Every roller coaster here is fantastic. They were fun, especially for Fuji. Fujiyama, for me, was like a car crash, but a fun yeah. car crash. Yeah, well, so was a lot of car crash rides here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but the new one, Zocon, I love it. So good. I'm yeah. rebranding it, Dopamine the Ride. Dopamine the Ride, down. love that. Everything about it makes me happy. Maybe that's because it feels like you're riding a motorcycle. I don't know. It feels like you're in the opening for an anime. I'm so excited. It really it. does. I love it, I'm rebranding it. It's my favorite. She's the best, Fuji Q. Can't recommend enough. Maybe the prettiest scenic views around you of any park Probably. in the world. Probably. Uh, we put, well, we... Park at El Cafe is good too. Ooh. You should do a list sometime. That would be a good Maybe video of best future? parks that I've been to with the scenery. Comment yes. if you want to see some of our top sceneries at parks. Next park for us is the other big park of Japan, Nagashima Spa Land. Kuge Steel Dragon coming at you real soon. Love you all guys. Catch you next time. Bye.